I would like to ask the Minister for Policy and Reform what percentage of the working population of the island is employed in the public sector? <coughs> Mr. Thomas, to reply. Thank you, Mr. President. The official measurement of the size of the working population of the Isle of Man is recorded every five years as part of the census. Data is also collected at each census on the proportion of the working population who are employed in the public sector, which includes both central, national and local government. At the time of the last census in 2016, 21% of the working population were employed in the public sector. This represented a decrease of 3% in comparison to the census in 2006. I'm sure that the Honourable Member will welcome the information provided in answer to written question 24 when she sees it, another question the Honourable Members asked, which shows that the number of people in full-time equivalent posts in the public sector has reduced by nearly 600 over the past six years and has reduced by nearly 80 in the most recent financial year too. Supplementary, Mrs Kane. Thank you, Mr President, and I thank the Minister for his answer. Um, but I confess I'm somewhat puzzled and wonder if I could refer him to the Cabinet Officer's quarterly economic and statistical update um, that shows by sector that we have 16,763 people working in the public sector out of a total of 52,000 just over, which I think would equate to around 32% of the workforce in the public sector. So um, could he perhaps give us a little more detail on those figures and say how that equates with the figure of 21% that he's just provided. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, um, Economic Affairs uh, prepares information from job link data from the Treasury Income Tax Division every quarter for the Council of Ministers' quarterly uh, statistical and economic update. Um, it's not appropriate to use that job link data as a reliable means of measuring either the size of the working population or the public sector, or even to make comparisons between the two, as people recorded in job link data include those who have left employment but their records are not closed down, and those who are not active in employment but retain employment records. For example, this may include casual employees who work very infrequently in certain roles, in addition to employees with multiple employments such as those with a substantive and a bank contract are counted multiple times within the job link data. This is evident, for instance, and this is a really good um, piece of figure for people to have in mind, this is evident, for instance, when you compare the job links data for public sector employment in March 2016, which was 14,096, with the census data of April 2016, which was 9,144. So there was a 5,000 person difference at that time, and that's the best guess of what the difference is now. Um, supplementary, Mr. Shimmins. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to ask the Minister, how does the 21% figure he quoted compare with the other Crown dependencies? Gosh, I have most information to my fingertips completely, but I will circulate that information after having done some research to circulate it for information. But of course, the Honourable Questioner would recognise that that information is already available in the public space, and him and I could, will find it from that basis. Supplementary, Mrs. Kane. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I could help the Honourable Minister in this. Um, <laughs> ah. my, my research from, from December 2018 would suggest that the UK public sector employment equated to 16.4%. Jersey public sector employment was 7,750 or 12.7%. Guernsey um, public sector employment just under 5,500 or 16.9% of the working population. Even Cyprus public sector employment, 16.8%. Um, um, so whichever statistical measure we're using, and if we go on his 21%, it would seem the Isle of Man is still very high. Um, can he offer any explanation for that? Nationalised industries? Not, uh, yes, uh, 
we, we need a proper economic analysis. We need to understand definitions of each of those countries. But the public sector in Jersey, for instance, is larger by that figure than it is in the Isle of Man. Obviously, Jersey's got a larger population as well. And as most of the public sector are teachers, are working in the health and care sector and working in the emergency services, there is a, a proportionality between <coughs> the number of people and the size of the population because you need more public service for more people. There's also a, a difference in the, in the political arrangements and social arrangements inside different countries. So, for instance, in Jersey and in the other Channel Islands, much more is outsourced and privatised, which ends up not being counted in the public sector. So we can make choices about GP services and putting them out to um, private sector, but that's something that we haven't done as yet, and that would take a wider public dis uh, discussion and decision in this honourable place, rather than just answer to a question. So the figures are very, very complicated. It's analysed fully in the scope and the size of government reports in, 20, in 2006. In 2012, we keep an eye on, on those figures, and every uh, situation of employment and delivery of public service needs to be reviewed. The main point is that good news figure that I gave, which is the employment in the last 10 years, 2008 to 2018, has gone down by a huge percentage and by 600 people, and in the last year it's gone down by a significant percentage and by 80 people, and that's what the headline should be, and the figures are beautiful if the newspapers and the radio stations want to put that on the front page of their news. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and I'd just like to challenge what the, what the Honourable Member, the Minister, has just stated with regards to the figures. Um, I'm quite certain um, he, he said, obviously, there'd been a reduction of 680 in the last year. Was that 80 full time equivalents or was that 80 posts? And I think the difference in the figures between the 9,500 and the 16,700 is the fact that we have numerous people working part-time and they're not full-time equivalents. So the question is asked about full-time equivalents. I wonder whether the Minister would be prepared to provide a report to all honourable members with regards to a complete breakdown of how many full-time equivalents are in each sector of government and department and office, please. Minister to reply. Thank you very much, uh, Mr President. No, those figures are full-term equivalent. Um, staff with contracted hours, as exactly described in the paper. Those figures are also available. They're not new figures, they're public figures. They're the ones that we publish in the Public Services Commission annual report, and I'd be pleased to break it down more between uh, departments if that information is available. I believe that's already available to, to, to some extent in the PSC annual report. Supplementary, Dr. Allenson. Thank you, Mr. President. I think the, the Minister has already described why it's quite difficult to benchmark our figures with other small jurisdictions, particularly in terms of the public sector um, we have here and the services it provides. Whilst he gives the good news of a reduction in the total number of people working in the public sector, will he also recognise that that reduction has to be managed very carefully and produced through efficiencies rather than reduction of frontline services? Minister. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Yeah, that's a, a very good question to make the point that public service isn't intrinsically good or intrinsically bad. It's what people choose to pay taxes for to actually deliver on the ground, and uh, we need a much wider debate than, 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 than that. The, moment, the main point in the question I wanted to associate myself with completely, which is that we've got to be very careful that we're actually getting <coughs> effective delivery of public service, not just head cutting. Um, uh, um, reduction in headcounts for its uh, own sake. In terms of an overall report, um, we already once produced in this administration a report on the size of the public sector. We've done that once already. It cost us nearly £20,000. We can do that as often as people want, I guess, if that's a good use of public money. But we established that the HR processes were valid. We established that the organisational development <coughs> process valid. We are transforming the delivery of public service, making it more into one public service. PIP and all of the other uh, digital strategy and people strategy projects are all related to this and we were, are in a better place for effective delivery of public service now than we were a few years ago and that is also now showing up in being able to focus every public servant as much as possible on the front line and the delivery of better public service rather than on useless jobs that unfortunately we got a few of ten years ago it seems. Honourable Member, Mr. Shimmons. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I am I'm surprised that the Minister is unaware of the comparable percentage figures of the other Crown dependencies. Would he agree that it is important to benchmark against our peer Crown dependencies? Otherwise, it's difficult to ascertain how effectively 
public service delivery is. Um, given that the information, as he said in his earlier response, is in the public domain, will he provide a benchmarking report to all honourable members, which should not cost £20,000, but certainly would be a useful piece of information, and then we will be able to ascertain whether it is beautiful or not. <laughs> This, uh, thank you, Mr. President. This government's about action. It's about doing things like the people strategy and the <coughs> strategy. It's about delivering better public service. I could have guessed pretty much accurately what the public service proportion was in Guernsey and Jersey. It's just that's not the point of guessing publicly available numbers. We can update the figures that were already in the last time we produced that report um, in response to Mrs. Edge's motion earlier in this administration with no problem, and I'll circulate that shortly. I have four more supplementary questions. Please make the questions and the answers short. Mrs Kane. Thank you, Mr President. I'll be brief. Um, thank the Minister for his detail. Um, and, uh, but wanting greater understanding of the figures, is there perhaps um, a need for some sort of narrative to go along with the labour market indicators to, to explain that, the, that this figure may not be the, the accurate figure and that there's more accurate figures available in government? But also, can he offer any reassurance in terms of benchmarking against other islands um, that we use the same system for calculating the, the proportion and the percentage of people working in the public sector so that people can have confidence in the figures that are produced. Mr Thomas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr President. There is a narrative in the document already which explains the statistical basis. Um, it's not right for politicians to try and uh, constantly keep justifying changes to paint them in a good light and so on. But what we do, we, we can make sure is that it's completely obvious to anybody who reads it that these are job link income tax uh, figures in the statistical reports. So that's a good suggestion from the Honourable Questioner. The, um, the uh, second part of the narrative is that, uh, is that there are World Bank reports. There are United Nations Population Office reports on exactly the difficulty of calculating the public sector and the public service. Um, another point is that smaller countries by definition have a larger proportion of the public service because of the fact that you need a certain number of lawyers and public servants for a legal system. <coughs> but over a smaller population you end up with a larger public service as a consequence. You need a if, you, if we're going to have our own national policy, which is important to us because we're our own nation, we need policy civil servants and they only need, so, they only need the same number possibly even in Scotland and Wales and so therefore their public service can potentially be smaller. So we will provide as much information as possible. We do have a statistical report that's just about to be um, finalised and we'll make sure we deal with this issue of definitions in employment in the public sector in that statistical report. Entry, Mr. Ashford. Thank you, Mr. President. Very briefly, would the Minister agree with me that when benchmarking, it's very, I guess particularly against our fellow Crown dependencies, it's very important that we're measuring the same thing. So, for instance, would the Minister agree that if you refer to the Guernsey Quarterly Population Employment and Earnings Bulletin, which provides the figures, they have an, indeed a category of public administration, which includes... Um, those working for the states of Guernsey, but they also have a secondary category of administration and support service activities, which they break out of that. And equally, Jersey, if you look at their um, their labour market figures, although they have 12.8%, they say, which is employed in the public sector, they also have 129 that are separated out, which are under education, health, and other services, which also includes people working for the state of Jersey. Thomas. I completely agree, Mr. President. And, uh, thank point the of order, Mr. Simmons. No, no. no. Completely agree, and uh, I just wanted to congratulate the Minister for Health and Social Care of taking action to make sure that every post in health and care in this uh, administration is actually doing something valuable and worthwhile in the public service, because every pound of public revenue is precious. We don't need to get hung up on statistics for its own sake. We need to make sure that all of us and all the managers who are directly responsible make sure that every public servant is not working too hard, so they're off sick and with stress, but is working hard enough to justify every public pound that's spent on them. Supplementary Chief Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the um, Honourable members, uh, Minister not agree with me that net cost to the taxpayer is key, not headcount? Otherwise, we will end up departments spending more to keep their headcounts down 
And would he not agree with me that the example of the health service where additional nurses have been trained might well have increased the headcount, Mr President, but has significantly reduced the bill when compared with agency costs, which is on a ratio of three to one. Furthermore, would the Honourable uh, Minister not agree with me that um, whilst the percentages can vary with various information, France, for example, with a 33% public servant um, employment, and Scotland with a 21.5% cost still makes the Isle of Man look quite reasonable and good value for money. Party political broadcast. I agree completely. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, okay, the, public, the public sector percentage has gone down from 24% um, in the Isle of Man between 2006 to 21% by 2016. But the absolutely crucial points are the ones that the Chief Minister has made very eloquently, which is that we need to be reflecting exactly on what every public servant is doing and making sure we have the right people, if they're full-time equivalent, professionally trained <coughs> people, rather than hired hands for short-term contracts. Honourable Member, Mr Baker. Thank you, Mr President. Maybe a little bit of repetition with the two previous questions, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, the, would, the, would the Minister agree with me that correctly used yes, he will. Of course ben 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 benchmarking can be a very uh, <coughs> useful technique in both business and, and, and in public services and in agriculture and in other places, but that it's a sophisticated process and it does require a full understanding of the structure of, the, uh, of what's been, been analysed, that analysis on its own is only useful if you understand the context and bad, poor analysis can actually be worse than, not, than none at all. Honourable Member, could I have a question? This is turning into a debate, <coughs> I rather fear. Yeah, would the, a question would the, and, would the and a short agree with answer. Me, uh, Mr President, would the Minister agree with me that the key test is about the efficiency and the effectiveness of public services and of government as a whole, not the individual models that we may have compared to other jurisdictions that <laughs> may be similar? Thank you, Mr. President. The analysis in that you, you do agree. Yeah, you I do, do agree. agree. <laughs> the analysis, the analysis, the analysis in, that, in that question made the point superbly. Analysis is always better than political diatribe. Ms. Edge. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just, I wonder if the Minister would mind, he's talked about 80 people have left within the last year. I'd like to know were they through if you could provide a report as to whether they were through efficiency savings or were they through payouts from government. We've had recent reports with regards to payouts and I'd like to know which departments the reductions have taken place in. Thank you. I won't provide a specific report because I was just quoting from the forthcoming Public Services Commission report which provides that information every year.